Hi everyone and welcome to Anna Dialogue, the dialogue on analog music reproduction. Today we're going to talk about audio cassettes. I know, it's something covered in a variety of videos on YouTube, articles, uh, because tapes are coming back, audio cassette tapes, compact cassettes are coming back, which is a good thing, I think, because uh, it'll lead the, the public um, consumers towards an analog domain. The, the process already started with vinyl records and now it's getting bigger touching uh, media such as compact cassettes, which is after all, I must say, an excellent media. Why do I say after all? Well, let's take a look. So, as I was saying, uh, nevertheless, I must say, I must admit personally that this, after all, is a good mm, typology of media, of a uh, platform uh, for music reproduction. I overall love tape. I love the saturation that it gives, the coloration, the warmth, which you can find also obviously in a higher resolution. But we must remember that audio cassettes had a very long development so that's why we can have a, a very excellent typology of of quality in the, of the of the support of the tape obviously we have we have to find new old stock because almost and nobody else is producing cassettes hopefully not for long hopefully they'll come back but again are they going to be of high quality probably not so might as well just dive in the in the used market. Although uh, on eBay the, the prices are, go are going higher and higher, unfortunately. So mm, what, what what's the, the the big difference? I must admit, and I'm I, I'm talking about my experience back in the 80s and 90s and my experience now. Well, when we were using cassettes in that period, 20, 30 years ago, at least. In my situation, as I assume for uh, the majority of, of, of kids or uh, teens and also grown-ups, was using bad quality supports, was using bad quality cables, ultimately was using bad quality or normal quality uh, tape decks. Which is why, as soon as CDs finally hit the market, Everyone cried, that's a miracle, fantastic, great, cassettes are crap, come on, let's go on with CDs, forget the rest. Well, actually, in that moment, it was probably right, because if you bought a CD with a normal Discman or a normal CD reader and player, you could have a decent result, probably, uh, in most cases, um, surpassing what was, what was that of a cassette player, of a of an audio cassette. But turning back now, I must admit that um, if you find the proper tools, the proper gear, um, the quality of the sound reproduction actually is kind of magical, I must admit. And the same thing regards um, Walkmans. Uh, we will come back to that in another video in the future. But apart, apart from that, uh, I just want to take a look now at the main typologies of cassettes and after that then we'll also take a look at my tape deck which will give us a few um, points to discuss on the main aspects you need to look for a good quality tape deck. So let's go on. Okay then, let's explore the main typologies of uh, audio cassettes, cassette tapes. Um. First of all, it's important to know that the, the cassette tapes are subdivided in four types and that um, they are mainly uh, realized in polyester. Cassettes were invented practically by um, Philips in the early 60s and after that we have a development, a very important uh, development of this technology which produced in the end four typologies of cassettes. The most common cassettes, the most common typology is type 1, the so-called 
ferro or ferric oxide, which reveals the, the composition of the compound, which is on the polyester, which is on the film of the tape. Uh, and this typology is at the base of all the music cassettes, uh, the pre-recorded cassettes that we have bought, owned, listened to uh, in the past. In fact, unfortunately, most of the, the early cassettes like these, you can see, you can recognize these, they're from the 70s with this orange back. All these cassettes, which in some cases are are excellent recordings, are all mainly record, I would say 90% are mainly record on type 1, typology 1 of cassettes, um, which is the ferro or ferric oxide typology. Why this is? Well, mainly I would say because of the costs of the other typologies. Well, obviously in the beginning we only had this, we only had type 1, then as we will see there are other typologies. There are good examples of albums, I would say, like this one of Alan Parson, Parsons, but um, unfortunately you you keep on thinking how could these uh, how, the, how could these albums could would have been good on a, a better typology of support, of media, of tape. So remember that when you go to buy pre-recorded cassettes, as I said, the almost all of them are recorded, produced on low quality type one ferro cassettes, unfortunately, which I think is a, it's a, a true pretty pity, a true shame because um, if only the industry would have invested a little more, like for example, uh, mobile fidelity did at a certain point uh, we would have had great recordings obviously this was very expensive as you can see this is a very high quality cassette it's chromium, di chromium dioxide uh, which we will see is a type 2 uh, sourced from original master tapes and the sound of these was incredible obviously as you can imagine but they were very very expensive because uh, they were produced in low numbers of copies. People does not want, do not, didn't want, and does not want to spend that much money on, on the supports. So unfortunately, only high quality audiophile, hi-fi geeks, elitarian stuff is produced, and it has absurd prices. Unfortunately, otherwise you gotta, you gotta stick with this. Which, as I said, isn't it, it's not that bad, but. It's not even that good, unfortunately. But let's proceed. So, as we said, type one um, ferro or ferric oxide cassettes. Type number two are the chrome cassettes, the so-called so chrome cassettes or chromium dioxide, which again reveals the compound, the main compound in this typology of cassettes which is chrome and sometimes also cobalt and things like that. Um, this was a great, a huge leap in the technology of audio cassettes. And I must say that here we finally have a good comp compromise in quality. Although we must say that, um, coming, what was the problem with the first type? The problem is here, in this typology of cassettes here, uh, is that we have uh, a very bad treble. The high frequencies weren't that good. Weren't that good. That's why the industry developed the chrome cassettes, which uh, had excellent treble, uh, excellent high frequencies. Why is this? Because of the higher bias. Now, the bi bias is a key uh, aspect of all these typologies of cassettes. Uh, the, the, the different typologies go accordingly following the composition, but also the bias. What is bias? Bias is a very difficult concept to um, explain. Let's just say that um, when you record a music signal using a magnetization 
of the tape, a hence a magnetic field, the signal is not linear, unfortunately. It's not proportional to what you have uh, just recorded, uh, since there is this strong ma magnetic field. Hence, you need a very high frequency uh, in current, which is somehow added to the magnetization along with that, which corrects the uh, um, somehow somehow it compensate the uh, the mistake introduced by the magnetic field, and you have to have that same or similar bias. Uh, in the, in the recording phase and obviously in the reproduction phase. Bias is very important in tape, in, type, in tape reproduction. The higher the bias, the higher the frequency response. What is the downside though of this typology of cassettes, of chrome cassettes? The downside, unfortunately, due to the composition, is the um, lack of, of bass. Uh, the lower frequencies the, does not are not uh, correctly um, reproduced, unfortunately. Uh, obviously, after time, chromium dioxide uh, gathered much more success and the composition got better over the years. But in the beginning, we must say that we had these, this typology of issues in the lower frequencies, which is why was developed uh, typology number three and uh, what was the problem with these? These there are very difficult to find type three cassettes, unfortunately. Uh, if you check your cassette deck, you're not going to find type three settings. You're going to find type one, type two, or type four. But type three, where is type three? Well, it's very simple. Type three was the combination of uh, ferro or fer fer ferric oxide cassette with a uh, chrome dioxide compound, they were both put together to create a mix and hopefully obtain good treble and good, and good bass. What was the problem though? The bias again, because unfortunately if this has a low bias, this has a very high bias compared to, to, no, to number one. So again you need to, have, to find a compromise in that sense which makes useless the, the production of, ta of tapes number three. And in fact, uh, only a few years they were in production and rapidly took it, taken out of the, of the market. So after that problem, what was the final response of the market in music cassettes in, in order to have to surpass all these issues tied to the different parts of the frequencies? Well, the answer was, something like this metal cassettes type 4 cassettes this is the top of the top of uh, music cassette uh, production well type 4 cassettes unfortunately have one big issue and at the end I would say which is cost these are very, 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 very expensive, unfortunately. And um, one of the main problems that started at the beginning of this of the, of the production was the composition. So with the introduction of type 4 cassettes, also known as metal cassettes, in fact, we have a new formulation on the tape film, which is pure metal particles. Uh, this composition allowed to have a very high bias, allowing hence an extreme dynamic range with uh, excellent low frequencies and very high frequencies. Uh, in, in, for for a, a frequency response, which absolutely blow out of the water all the other typologies. The problem is that these are very expensive they were very expensive at the time and they are very expensive now since they are kind of rare. And unfortunately, the no pre-recorded cassettes, uh, well at least, I'm sure there are a few, but it, it's not a standard procedure. I mean, um, this was not used to do something commercial. It was used for your voice, for um, uh, to record your band, for demos, 
for journalism and things like that. So unfortunately, this very high quality media, which surpasses somehow, uh, I th in my opinion, what is a reel-to-reel -reel tape in proportion, since this typology of cassette is the result of uh, over 30 years of, well, even less actually, uh, many years of development, let's, uh, let's just say, because metal cassettes came around actually pretty pretty early they were already introduced at the end of the 70s but this doesn't matter I mean they they never they never were broadly um, distributed due to the to this to this problem of, uh, of the costs another problem that arised immediately was that the, this uh, metal composition unfortunately was wearing uh, the cassette heads the tape decks heads or recorders which was it's a very bad issue because obviously if you start using these uh, constantly in your in your cassette tape in your tape deck you're gonna wear out your your heads in no time at least this was happening in the first part of the production then after some years we must say that um, the different labels the different houses found much better solutions and the last um, productions during the 80s and 90s were much better and were probably found the, the right compromise in terms of uh, wear out of, of the heads and sonic uh, quality. So what is another uh, feature that can distinguish all these typologies of cassettes? Well, something else interesting I think to to notice is how they appear on top. As you can see, a Type 1 cassette has just these little squares which can be popped down in order to preserve what is recorded on the tape. Otherwise, you need these in order to uh, give access to the tape deck to record on the, on the medium. While chrome dioxide typology of cassettes had a different uh, type of construction of geometry as you can see they have a double space with the little squares here on the external parts plus um, an empty little square on the, on the on the side of these so this is type one this is type two i don't have type three as i said they are, they are very rare and we don't even want to mess around with those and while type 4 cassettes uh, are also very easily identifiable because they are identical to the chrome cassettes on the two uh, external parts but they also have these two squares in the middle so they're easily recognizable so apart from that what is a good reason to go ahead and follow this cassette culture well a, an excellent reason apart from uh, from buying old media for very very cheap I mean um, less than a dollar in some cases and I think after all if you had a good tape deck as we will see uh, in the following part of the video you do take uh, you, you 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 can have some rewarding listening sessions I think but apart from that the good part is is taking place now with the cassette, with the so-called cassette culture, where um, independent bands are creating their own albums for just a few dollars on this typology of, of media. Now you have to be careful. I picked up these on Bandcamp. There are hundreds of, of bands issuing their own cassettes now because obviously it's cool, but at the same time I think it adds something to the uh, listening experience. This example of um, Ocean Beach, I think it's an excellent album, very well recorded, very well recorded. Excellent product in my opinion. So you can also find high quality uh, stuff around in this, in this context. Instead, I'm sorry to say, but something like this, which came along with the vinyl, the record vinyl, this was very, very poor quality, unfortunately. You can also recognize these, they're very simple and cheap with colors and um, these typology of, of, of cassettes do not give justice to this media and unfortunately you will find yourself throwing these out of the way uh, 
but instead you're, you're, you're gonna miss on excellent products as this one. And for example, other issues of albums, which probably something like this, I would say this probably was uh, one of the main actors in starting this cassette culture. I'm not gonna even tell you what this is. Google it if you don't know. But I can tell you that this was one of the reasons why cassettes are coming back. Yes, this is awesome. Okay then, now that we know a little bit more on the composition, on bias, on the typology of tapes, and how good they can be already in the typology of the media, uh, let's take a look at, um, as an example, my tape deck, but uh, also the main features that you're supposed to look for if you're about to buy a tape deck, which I think is the right moment now. Actually, a few years ago it was even better because now the demand is growing, so obviously even the prices are. But again, uh, go for it because just for a few hundred dollars, euros or whatever, you're gonna get an excellent product, a high quality or probably even a professional uh, tape deck, which will, will have astounding results in the, in the hi-fi music reproduction. Let's take a look. Okay, so if we decide to buy a tape deck, which I must admit that now is the correct time to do that, because um, actually a few years ago it was even better because uh, you can find a lot of professional tape decks or high quality tape decks like this one you can see here for a very reasonable price. I pick up, picked up this uh, a few months ago for 200 euro and I, I had it um, serviced uh, for a, 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 another 50 euro so the, the total the total expense is around 250 euro in this this machine I don't know the exact price in the 80s but it was very very expensive I absolutely could not afford something like that back in the 80s so uh, good stuff guys I mean if you're interested in cassette culture now is a good moment I think there are four main aspects you need to look out for when you're hunting for a good tape deck um let's take a look well first of all you should avoid those tape decks that have t double decks to um two parts where you can put two cassettes usually the motors and the components are not as good as one dedicated um tape deck so go for that for a single typology uh, Another thing to avoid, in terms of avoiding uh, aspects we don't we don't absolutely want, is um, auto reverse. You do not want that because, unfortunately, with auto reverse, uh, the by the azimuth of the uh, of the the heads of the tape deck will go out of uh, out of line, unfortunately. So the best thing to do is to look for something simple. A very simple tape deck, deck, but the features that this tape deck has to have, in my opinion at least, are mainly four. First of all, it has to have three heads. I mean, the three heads have to be separated. One for erasing, obviously, one for playback, and one for recording. These have to be separated. Um, it has to have a dual capstan, which uh, allows the motor to be to work much more easily and with precision uh, in terms also of wow and flutter and, and, and reading reading back the, the media on the, on the film of the tape. So it's important to have a dual capstan. And I would add to this a third point is a demagnetization system. You can do this by hand if you want. You can demagnetize your heads. But for example this model does have an automatic demagnetization system, which is, very, which is very cool, because every time you have the perfect um, setting for a reproduction, you don't have to do that every once in a while. Uh, again, as I said, you can do it by hand if your tape deck does not have that, so it's not fundamental. Uh, a good uh, element that a tape deck should have is obviously also a Dolby. Dolby B and C, if you have Dolby S, is one of the latest tape decks, 
so it should be um, all in, in uh, there should be all three of them and it should be a high quality tape deck because Dolby S was a very um, it was a, a out for only a few years but it was a really high typology of com very high quality typology of, of component and resolution um, I'm not a big fan of Dolby although a lot of people say that when Dolby is correctly um, used in recording and reproduction uh, the sound quality of recordings should be much better in any case we need Dolby B and C in order to reproduce for example pr for example pre-recorded recordings so we need that you have to look for that so um, another good thing I would say uh, that at least this deck has and that not many decks have although high quality or professional decks do have is is an auto calibration which allows to for example we put a metal cassette allows to uh, have an auto calibration of the whole system of all the parameters in order to have a perfect uh, setting before starting to record uh, like for, for instance it's calibrating the correct bias it's finalizing the calibration and the equalization and as you can see at this point it, it says ready in fact the tape deck recorder is ready now to um, record in metal in type 4 mode for example instead if we have a chrome dioxide uh, cassette it does the same thing which as I said in order to perfectly record your music, your voice, or anything. Uh, this is a very, very helpful feature, in my opinion. Finds the bias, calibrates, finds the correct equalization, and the tape is ready in just a few seconds. Very cool, very cool. And if you have this feature, obviously, at that point, you're going to have excellent recordings like something like this I think high quality type 4 metal cassettes it's here I've got 13 kinds of blues I know them all by name okay guys um, I will put in the video description here below a few links to whom is still producing cassettes, uh, a few artists, where to find independent artists, uh, a, a youth, useful set of contacts to, to start moving around. Um, I hope you like this video. Please give, leave me your comments. Please leave your suggestions here below because remember this is a dialogue, it's not a monologue. So I'm interested in what you're writing. And as you can see, for now at least, I'm trying to reply to every comment or question. Well, thank you for following, guys, and stay tuned. Bye.